you to imagine that it's a sunny afternoon and you're headed down the street to get the mail. On the way there, you see someone walking their dog down the street. And let's say that you wanted to pet this dog. What would you do? You would ask for permission and the owner would make a decision for their pet with good intentions. So how does this translate to classroom dissections? Who got to make these decisions for all these animals? Was this out of care and good intentions? Or for reasons that should no longer apply? We consider every choice that may affect the pets that we love, but how many of us consider the impact we have every time we're forced to pick up a scalpel? As Albert Einstein once said, the only source of knowledge is experience. But to what lengths do we need to go to gain this experience and therefore knowledge? Is there only one way, one choice, one select experience that we have to choose? Or are there in fact many experiences of which lead to a more inclusive environment, a more caring society, and a further extent of knowledge? Dissections are restricting us to the past while we need to focus on the future. So, if dissections are not our future, then what is? Is there another education option suitable to replace dissections? And if so, what is it? That is what we are here to talk about today. We have partnered with the Society for Humane Science, the BC SPCA, and many other organizations to find the best alternative options to physical dissections. Millions of dollars has been spent worldwide to create other methods such as virtual programs, interactive models, synthetic specimens, and many more with the research that is being conducted daily. We no longer have to harm animals in exchange for education. So why haven't we stopped? Many students have presented the fact that they are uncomfortable with dissection, whether this be due to cultural or personal beliefs, but they are often too worried to discuss this with their teachers. But it doesn't have to be this way. Our mission will create a more inclusive environment for everyone. Our project began when we started high school and were introduced to the concept of dissection. Knowing we would have to perform dissection in our later years of high school led us to not want to participate in biology, despite us all having a passion for science. After starting our website, ourvoiceforchange.org, we had all sorts of people reach out to us to share their thoughts and concerns with dissection. Now, we would like to share some of those stories with you. I think dissection at a secondary level is unnecessary. Many students don't seem mature enough for it and show little to no respect for the animal. For example, playing with, the body, with playing with the animal like a puppet, playing with the organs, and mutilating the body. In middle school and high school, I dreaded the dissection unit. It caused a great deal of anxiety for me. I felt singled out as a kid who didn't want to participate. Others would ask to opt out too after I did, but it wasn't easy disagreeing with an authority figure about this. In our advanced society, we have the opportunity to create change. We no longer have to stick to our old ways. Fifty years ago, when students were required to learn about the anatomy of humans and animals, dissection was the go-to. However, in our modern world, this should no longer be normal. We cannot continue saying to ourselves, it's just science or it's just the way students learn, when alternatives have been in the making for years. We are teaching today's youth to treat animals and our environment as tools for our own use. Animals are being sourced not only from their natural habitats, but they are being bred for the sole purpose of dissection. We have formed dissection into being like a rite of passage for students, when it shouldn't be. In fact, in the UK, there are no high school dissections, and even in university, it's just optional. So why do we? We have brought our concerns to our school district and we have successfully created a draft student choice policy. And this will allow students to opt out of physical dissections and have a viable replacement provided without going against their personal or cultural beliefs. Making physical dissections no longer our default. In the words of Amy Richards, they won't learn as much with their eyes closed because they are disgusted. The physical performance of dissection distracts many students, which leads to interference of their learning. There are alternative options out there that are tested and proven to give an equal and in most cases a better level of education. Not only that, but it is also cost effective. In fact, if every school district in British Columbia became dissection free right now, our province could save over a quarter of a million dollars in the first year alone. Through doing this, we can create a more sustainable school system and decrease our environmental footprint. We have deemed animal dissections to be a necessary part of biology classes.
when really the curriculum only calls for an understanding of human and animal anatomy. Dissection is not required, and yet as a student it feels as though it is. Only 1% of students actually need the knowledge of animal dissections in their future careers. Knowledge that could be taught through other methods or later on once in a specific degree program. Even the dexterity skills used in dissection can be taught through cutting something as simple as a banana. We want to work with our teachers and with our district to give students a choice in their learning. By making this change in school systems, we can help tens of thousands of students learn in a way that best suits them, feel more comfortable in their own classrooms, and save countless animal lives. There are so many pro pro problems in this world that are beyond our control as individuals, but this goal is within reach, and we can achieve it right now. We have all the resources, so what is stopping us? We became as four passionate youth who were uncomfortable with the concept of dissection. Through utilizing our voices and strengths, we've been able to advocate for our learning and the learning of others. We encourage you to do this in your own schools and communities by advocating and spreading awareness on the harmful aspects of high school dissection. So that leads us to the question, what do you want our future to look like? Thank you. Yeah.